Hi guys, it's me, Andrea. I will show you today some funny thing. Um, I will use this stem set and um, two dogs. The closest look of mine, I will use this one and that next to it, this. Um, you know, my hubby had this idea to do um, this, yeah, food station, should I say, that like, you know, where the bowls of my dogs are, with the water bowl and the food bowls and put some oh, the batches that the dogs know which bowl is them yeah theirs <laughs> no but um it's a bit difficult to explain i will show you later you will understand what i mean so what my plan was um oh this is my new cl zig clean colors real brushes yeah got them finally i got a really good deal and I, they were always so expensive but this time i really got a deal so I go through this very, very quick because my plan was to stamp them and, of course, to colorize them as I do here and then scan them and print them out in a bigger scale. That's what I did. Problem, my printer didn't want to show it in the real colors. It looked awful, so I've done something differently so I will see you will see it in um, later on so first thing was purely trying my new zigs and how they work this is a very very fine watercolor paper and um, I uh, put them on by themselves or use a water tank brush and blend them out so they are working both ways perfectly I think. The colors are very pigmented and rich. What I thought is they they would have been, I thought they would have been more juicy but no that basically they work so. And a bit of background behind my little dogs here and I do the same on the other side. So and it is really fun to work with this brushes with this pens what do you call them? watercolor markers or they have these brushes on the top and um, they are really good very you can work with them very fine or like a brush so this is the print can you see that it is awful what I did I uh, traced it here in this bigger scale and I will put that on watercolor paper as you can see, I traced it over uh, because I need it in that size. Otherwise, these dot pictures would get lost on the wall where I want to put it. And I use this really very good watercolor paper. That's Kenson. That's one of this Moulin du Roy. One of my precious ones. I only use them for special projects. And this is one of the special projects. So... I trace uh, both dogs down on that watercolor paper through tracing paper. That's one of the tracing papers. You can erase all the little um, areas you get when you use this normal tracing paper, you know, that's specially made for artists. And I use a black marker to go over the lines to define them more. On both of them and then I try my or I use my zigs again and basically same sort of colors I've used before but now the scale is so much bigger so that's quite a good test to try them and they really work well you can see that when I blend it out it is still very juicy I quite like to work like this because it's easier for me to get this uh, different shadings, so that works best, or it works best for me. So, and the tongue, of course, naughty little guy. I went a bit dark here with the snout, you will see that at the end, but that's okay. You can live with that. Go in. The black nose on the other side already while I had the black marker out. 
I should have gone a tiny bit lighter. You know, they are in this 60 color markers. Um, there are enough gray tones, but yeah, it will get a bit darker afterwards. You will see that. Bit of shading here and there with different colors. It's a brown. So the color choice in this six, this sixties, it's really good. Absolutely enough. It's what you need. You don't need more, in my opinion. Okay. I think you can get bigger sets. Not sure about that. So going over with a black add-in fine liner to give all the contours back. And then I will go over to the other one, and that should be Ganga. This is Kali, and that should be Ganga. And I find it always a bit difficult to colorize a black dog. And that's why I start very light with, with the lightest gray I could find, and work my way up to darker grays. Because when you put in a black, well, when you go in with a black zig or with black paint, in, uh, whatever paint it is, yeah, you won't see any anything. You won't see any any shading or lines or what it is. So that's why I do it in this way. And I think, for me, it works quite good. don't know if it's the way you do it, but that's the way I do it. Might be wrong, but it's okay for me. So, I'm not a watercolor specialist, never learned that. I go with my gut feeling, you know, and what feels right to me. I use different greens here for um, the background, for the ground, where they're standing on. Darker green here for shading. So, and for the background, I use blue and start with a light one. And I think that I use it completely without blending it. I think, yeah, it looks like I use it without blending. But I go in with a darker blue for shading. And I think I blend that out with my water tank brush at the end. We'll see. I even can't remember. I've done that yesterday and I can't remember. Yeah, <laughs> getting old. <laughs> okay, let's see what I do. Yeah, I, I I use my water tank brush for blending it out. Yay! So, um, what um yeah was important to me was that I had to seal the surfaces here. It's watercolor, and it will be on the wall, um, over the boats, and um, of course there will be splattering, water splattering, whatever bit of when the dirty dogs coming back inside. Um, wet, it might be that when they shake, that water splatters go on there. So that's why I seal it. I spray it, start to spray with hairspray and then with varnish. And now this is um, glossy varnish, liquid glossy varnish with my brush. It wasn't perfect, but it's not bad. So, and now this will be the water tap. And that goes in the middle because they have one water bowl and that is in the middle between their foot bowls. And I want to have this image above the water bowl on the wall. Um, you will see an image at the end where everything is on the wall. So you will understand what I wanted to do with it. It's purely decoration. Look, and this is a plastic thing I found in the cellar. And I will use this. Um, it's very slick plastic, so that's why I go over with gesso. I go over two or three times at least, I think. So, and for the tap, I use this pewter acrylic paint and um, for this plastic tap. And for, on the paper, this drawn uh, tap, I will use silver because of this, I wanted to have this a bit darker. And I go over this several times as well. I put several layers on top. So and for this uh, tab, I use silver from Amsterdam as well. 
Ja, we sew it now all. And fill it in with a brush and the shading. I will do that later. At the end when everything is dry. Okay, that should look like this. I have to glue it together now and I use E6000 and um, that glues best only for the inside. Squeeze it together and that will last. So, and what I did here, used my Pit Pen Big Brush, scribble a bit on the craft mat and I use a blending stump to go in here and do a bit of shading. I've done the blending stump because I wanted to use something really dry and not a brush um, to have a more distressed shading look. So, and I think that works quite good. It's not bad. Yeah, quite happy with that now. On the right and the left, but that's it then. Here and there a bit. So, our last layer after that has dried because a bit of E6000 came through. So I go over that. And when that dried, I glued that down. Oh, before I went over and uh, did the lines again with my black add-in but that's it then ready to glue the tap on this plastic part oh no talking rubbish again <laughs> i do the background yay in the same way i did that with voice but i use um what is it my graphics my Durban graphics for that and they are um or to, they are permanent. When they are dry, they are permanent. So I can go over with uh, water or here with my um, varnish without any problems. But I will go darker. It's a bit too light at the moment. But I glue this plastic thing on first. Sorry, but I needed to focus on it. So when that dried, I went over with a darker blue and I think I used my, yeah, I went in with my big brush pit pens and blended out with my fingers. I always touch the plastic tap there with a, I should have put it away, but yeah, I always had it in my hand while I was blending and touched the plastic thing. <sighs> I had to go afterwards, I had to go over with paint again. You will see that now in the close up. I will show you, you can see that there's a bit of color from the pit pens now. So I will give you a close up from all three pieces. And afterwards, you see some pictures while, um, how it looks like on the wall. So, okay, I will go over that afterwards off camera won't be seen so so this is the tap and with the boys you will see the boys now that the small one so here you can see it's smeared a bit but i think it gives a bit of a it looks a bit like uh, a motion you know like the dog is just whoosh, running across with um this one it worked much better so that's it I hope you liked it. I, I think it's so funny, this little project. When you see the picture, it's really, really funny. And, um, um, yeah, if you like, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a nice comment. I really would appreciate that. And I thank you so, so much for watching. Look at the boys in front of their boats. Yeah, they know now where to go, actually. <laughs> so... Have a fantastic time, guys. And thanks again. See you soon with my next project. Bye-bye.